you're tired, you're stressed, and you just want to be done with your master's at this point. But there's still that one last long and painful dissertation module to complete. Or maybe you're just scared and worried about whether or not you even pass. Let's figure out how you can get your research done with the least amount of stress. Hi there, I'm Ken and I teach and supervise research at two UK universities. Welcome to my channel. If you had research experience before, choosing a method that you've already used will naturally make your life easier, but why do that? It's boring, it's a waste of your time, and you learn nothing from it. You now have access to support and teaching that you wouldn't get if you were doing this research independently. Mistakes are more forgivable now, so this is a great opportunity for you to learn something new and experiment with different research methods. On the other hand, if you're new to research or looking to try a new method, each approach will come with its own set of challenges and advantages. In this video, we'll look at various research methods and identify which parts are more difficult or easier. Depending on your skills and circumstances, some methods will appeal to you more. However, keep in mind that the choice of research method should be guided by the research question and the gaps in the existing literature, not by how easy it is to carry out. I've made a video and a template on how to find research gaps like a pro, so don't miss it. Let's tackle the big question. Is a literature review easier than empirical research? Literature reviews are often thought to be easier because you don't need ethical approval or permissions, you don't have to recruit participants, and you also avoid the anxiety that comes with data collection. However, students often underestimate literature reviews. While you may avoid participant recruitment, you must search for literature in a systematic way, which can take weeks of trial and error with databases. Additionally, you need to understand both quantitative and qualitative research to engage meaningfully with the studies that you are reviewing. You also need to synthesize diverse data types, research methods, and findings into one cohesive document. And this is quite an advanced skill. Literature reviews are not always beginner friendly, and many students only realize this far too late. Empirical research may look intimidating, but you are only focusing on that one particular research method. While participant recruitment can be quite daunting, you can leverage your personal and professional networks to make this easier. Good planning in your recruitment strategy and data collection approach tailored to your sample also helps. Literature reviews may be administratively simpler, but they demand greater theoretical competence and research method familiarity. Empirical studies often involve more administrative work, but allow you to focus on your learning on specific methods. So on paper, neither is universally simpler. Within literature review methods, there's a clearer distinction in terms of difficulty. Non-systematic reviews are the easiest, but they lack the rigor that is typically expected at the master's level. Realist reviews are not beginner friendly. They require familiarity not only with the method but also with the philosophical traditions like realism and critical realism. They are more suited for PhD level research. Policy reviews can work well at the master's level but they require extensive awareness of relevant documents. If you work in a related organisation or ministry or have high level professional experience, this can be a lot easier for you. Stakeholder consultations are often part of this process so access to these professionals would help. Rapid reviews are well suited to master's level research. The methodology accommodates student level limitations such as not requiring second or third reviewers. Scoping reviews fall into the same category. These reviews don't usually require complex statistical tests. However, their difficulty lies in the systematic searching and selection. Justifying your choice of method and setting appropriate parameters can be quite challenging though. Finding the right inclusion and exclusion criteria requires extensive testing in the databases to find that sweet spot and can be quite frustrating as well. Systematic reviews are probably the most difficult. There are only two kinds, those that meet gold standard expectations like Cochrane or JBI or those that are really not systematic at all. A poorly executed systematic review does not count as one, so you are setting a really high bar for yourself. That said, 
their step-by-step -step nature can be quite reassuring for students that are new to research. Apart from searching and screening, analysis poses additional difficulties. Meta-analyses and meta-ethnographies require advanced knowledge of statistical or qualitative analysis methods. They are easy to get wrong or misapply. Narrative synthesis can make systematic reviews a bit easier, but may weaken your conclusions. Generally, for literature reviews, the harder parts of your research are deciding how to search and how to select. You are likely going to spend more time testing and getting this right at the proposal stage than empirical study students. Once your review protocol is finalised and approved, you will have an easier time afterwards because you'll mostly just be following all of the steps that you have laid out in the protocol. If you find this video helpful, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give it a like and share it with some people whom you think might benefit from this. I also have playlists of my videos made for masters and PhD students specifically, so go check them out. Survey methods are the most common quantitative approach at the postgraduate level. They are easy to create, distribute and manage. Platforms like Google Forms even offer basic though quite limited data analysis tools. However, you can't just send a survey to family and friends and expect academic rigour. Sample sizes need to be justified according to appropriate methods. You also need to test for reliability and validity as well. A poorly constructed survey will not yield meaningful results and some students do underestimate that. Secondary data analysis is very convenient. There's no need for you to collect data, you just need to clean it and analyse it. But analysis can be a problem. Public data may have already been an analysed and private data sets do require formal permissions. So having professional connections may make this a lot easier. You will likely need to provide data management and ethical handling plans before you can get access to some of these private data sets. Observational and cross-sectional studies are also manageable at the master's level. The key challenge is aligning your measurements and data collection with your research goals. Access to participants is often the bigger issue. If you have industry connections, this is once again easier. The challenge for students is often collecting enough data to avoid superficial findings. Quasi-experimental studies are harder to execute. Besides access issues, they require complex logistics like setting up a novel intervention, for example, and they do come with heightened ethical concerns. Knowing how to deal with confounding variables statistically is also another hurdle. Interviews are the most popular qualitative research method amongst the students. They are easier to organise compared to other methods. The challenge lies in crafting effective questions and responding dynamically during interviews. You need to think analytically on the spot. Interviews also generate a lot of data, which can be quite overwhelming to analyse if you lack focus or you are new to the research method. Focus groups are logistically harder to manage. Getting five busy people in the same room is difficult. They work best with people like students or carers, but arranging sessions with professionals like nurses or healthcare leaders is much tougher. If focus groups fail, interviews can sometimes be a backup depending on the situation. Students often forget that focus groups require facilitation skills as well. When done well, they can save you time and produce rich and focused data. The discussion itself often reviews patterns that will require more effort to elicit in interviews. Some qualitative methodologies are best avoided at the master's level. Critical realism is conceptually dense and not really manageable within a short time frame like a master's. They fit a PhD better. Phenomenology is often used by students very superficially or inappropriately and failing to reach the depth that is required of the research methodology. Narrative and general constructivist approaches are more accessible and they still allow you to hit the conceptual richness appropriate for the master's expectations. Ethnography and case studies often require large or multiple data sets. For beginners, a single data source is more than enough. Generally, the difficulties of qualitative studies is about being comfortable dealing with the messiness of qualitative data. A lot of students do struggle with that and they try to convey qualitative data analysis in very structured and very distinct and segregated manner, which then results in the data eventually losing the complexity that it originally has. I often often dissuade master's students from mixed methods research designs. More often than not, the study can focus on either one of the methods. However, if you're someone with expertise in one 
research approach and you want to explore the other side of research while still leveraging your expertise, this is a great method to show off your strengths while playing within your wheelhouse and still learning a lot from the research process. However, you need to make sure that you can manage the amount of data that will come your way and there's always that difficulty of synthesizing data from different research approaches. Time is also a limiting factor over here. Remember, at the end of the day, research methods are decided by research gaps and the available literature. Let that tell you what research method or methods are necessary for you to contribute knowledge to the field, and then you consider which one is easier. While ease vary from students to students, there are some research methods that I do not recommend at the master's level, especially if you're new to research. Often, it is possible for you to reposition your research ideas slightly so that you can create an argument to support the research method that you want to do. But the rationale needs to hold if not, you do not have a study at all. While you're here, you might be interested in learning how to ensure success in your research proposal. So head on over here for that video and I'll see you there. Goodbye.